Hi everybody and welcome to this Singularity Tech Day 2020. My name is Gwenda Shankalepore and I'm a Cloud Solution Architect working in Microsoft specializing in data and AI. Today, we're going to talk about leveling up your game using Azure Reinforcement Learning. If you are not familiar with the reinforcement learning concepts and what it is and how it works, don't worry, we're going to get through it during this session. And by the end of today, you're not only are going to understand all the terminology around the reinforcement learning area, but you're going to be able also to train some reinforcement learning algorithm on Azure. If you don't believe me, by the end of today, we're going to be able to train a Minecraft agent to get out of the maze. So if you're ready, let's start. Let's start with giving a very easy definition of what machine learning is. So when we refer to machine learning, we are referring to the study of computer algorithms that allow computer programs to automatically improve through experience. What does this mean? It means that usually we are gonna have some algorithms in which we are gonna fit in our data and what we expect the computer to do is actually to predict or classify the data that we are giving to him. And how do we train the uh, computer so that it learns actually how to do this prediction or classification? Well, when we talk about machine learning, we talk about different type of learnings that the computer can do. The first one and the most common one is called supervised learning. So imagine this scenario in which you want to give the algorithm a pick and you want to be able to distinguish if in the picture there is a dog or a cat. So what you usually would do is actually give uh, to the computer some definition of what makes a dog a dog and what makes a cat a cat. So you're going to tell them uh, the difference in, I don't know, the fur, the legs, uh, the tail, uh, the, hear the ears, the eyes, and all this kind of stuff. And these are going to be your features. So what are going to define the, the category that you want actually to classify? The classification dog or cat is going to be your label, and it's going to be what you want to achieve by the end of the training. So when you actually define in the data set the label, you're doing supervised learning. So you're already giving the computer uh, the information it needs to understand what's in the picture. Then we have another kind of learning that is called unsupervised learning. And let's imagine this kind of scenario. I'm acquiring something from, I'm doing a shopping on an e-commerce and I want to, uh, to see the suggestion that it gives me on uh, um, items that are related to the one that I'm actually looking at. In this case, what I'm doing is an unsupervised learning uh, algorithm. And behind the scene, I'm learning from the preferences of my, um, of my user to understand in which of the category, in which of the classes that I created on segmentation of my customer, it fits in. So um, in this case, I'm not giving the, the, the machine and the computer a data set in which I have all the information and I tell him that when the customer is called Gwenda, then he needs to show me something. But I give him a bunch of information on things that can be related and he finds some patterns inside this data and then uh, is, able, uh, of, uh, is able to look inside this pattern and actually create cluster uh, in which he can position the user when, when he gets in. And then we have the third type of learning that is called reinforcement learning. So what is reinforcement learning? It, usually you can think about reinforcement learning or the majority of the time you think about reinforcement learning, it refers to uh, the area of gaming. So imagine you have an agent and you want to uh, be able to let this agent interact with the word, with the player or um, uh, with, the, with the word itself. You can think about uh, the enemies that you find in video games. They need to interact with you and they need to fight you. Or if you can also think about, I don't know, autonomous cars, which are a different kind of reinforcement learning, but they are actually teaching uh, a car to interact with the human world. So we understood that reinforcement learning is a way we can teach the computer to do something, to learn something actually. But how does it actually work? The main goal of reinforcement learning is actually taking suitable actions to maximize reward in a particular environment. I know I'm using many words uh, that can be not very clear, such as action, reward, environment, but take a look at the picture that is on the right of the slide. So as you can see, we have an agent, which is our computer, the one we are trying to teach how to interact inside this word, that can take some action. As an action, we mean different things that you can do to interact in the environment. Let's think about, I don't know, 
uh, the um, autonomous car uh, scenario in which I have my car and I want to teach the car, I don't know, to stop when the red light is, is on. So this can be one action or uh, the other one can be to change uh, velocity when uh, I'm in the highway instead of uh, driving in the city, for example. So these are two kinds of action that I can take. The environment is actually the world in which I'm interacting in. And then the state and reward means that in this world I have um, uh, some different state depending on which are the action I'm taking. And for each action I'm taking, I am actually able to see, to evaluate if it was a good or a bad action. So all this work means that every time my agent takes an action in the environment, the environment state changes and I need to evaluate the reward. And this is actually how uh, reinforcement learning works. So we can say that the main component of a uh, reinforce, uh, reinforcement learning um, algorithm are the agent, of course, which is uh, our main actor, the environment in the definition in which we actually say that is a uh, form of transition from one state to another, and reward models to understand uh, actually how can I say that the reward was good or not. Then we have the action that sometimes are also called policies, which are uh, the steps, the things that I can take inside this environment that can change the state of the environment. And then the rewards that are also called the value function, which means how can I, we, we said that we want to maximize the reward in a particular environment. When we talk about uh, value function, we are meaning that we want to uh, optimize and find the best reward possible. So the best um, consequence uh, of our action uh, possible in this environment, in this specific environment. So hoping that I gave you an idea at least on the terminology for the reinforcement learning algorithm and an idea on how they actually learn in the process, uh, let's take a step even further in the definition of um, reinforcement learning algorithms. And uh, we need to distinguish between different categories of algorithms. Uh, and the distinction is going to be between model-based and model-free algorithms. Uh, and also depending on the value, uh, on how they are ba based. So if they are value-based, policy-based, or actor critic. So model-based uh, algorithms are actually algorithms that learn from the transitional models of the environment to compute the optimal policy. This means that they already have um, a reward function and a transition function that they can use to find which is the best reward possible, the best action possible to do to get the, the optimized reward that we are looking for, right? Uh, instead, with the model free, what it does is that uh, the, the algorithm learn, the agent learn uh, the optimal policy by interacting with the environment. What does this mean, actually? So imagine yourself into inside a kitchen that you want to actually make coffee. So let's imagine this. Uh, so if you are in a model-based algorithm, you already know how to do coffee and you probably know that the best way is uh, actually interact with the coffee machine. So you're gonna go to the coffee machine and do the coffee. And uh, maybe you take the wrong one and there, this, there can be some improvement in that, uh, in the way maybe you do the coffee if you're using a mocha or if you're using an electric uh, coffee machine. It depends on that, but uh, the idea is that you already know, you're used to that. So you know, you, are a sort of, you have a sort of a habit and you know which are gonna be the consequences uh, after you do the habit, right? Instead in a model free, you're in the kitchen and you are looking around to find the best way to do the coffee, but you don't know which one it is. So you probably go to the oven or you go to the microwave or you try it with, uh, with the sink. I don't know, you try different things uh, until in the end you are able to actually interact with the uh, coffee machine and you are able to create uh, your coffee, okay? To, to make your coffee, sorry. Uh, and of course, you can imagine that there are two main differences between uh, this model in performance. And in the model base, you're going to be very quick in finding the optimal policy, uh, but very slow in adapting in, adapting in uh, change of the environment. Instead, in the model free, you're going to be actually very good in adapting in the change of the environment, but it's going to take you some time to actually find uh, the optimal policy because you need to learn. And then, as I said, we have the value-based, policy-based, and actor-critic differences between the categories. So when we talk about uh, value-based functions, value-based, sorry, algorithm, uh, we, means that we mean that uh, the uh, agent learned the value function 
explicitly and computes the policy from that. So uh, basically, in this case, what we can what we can say is that um, the the policy is implicit and can be de derived from the value function, uh, but it's not defined. Instead, in the policy-based uh, approach, you actually have uh, the policy, so we expli you, you explicitly build a representation of the policy of the action, and from there, you try to compute and create the value function, okay? So you, you, don't, you, you actually create it, not computing, okay? Uh, I, I used the, the wrong uh, terminology. And the actor critic is actually uh, a mix of the two. So you learn both the policy and the value function, and uh, you try to learn and uh, uh, evaluate how good or bad the policy is. Okay. So this is uh, this is our, these are the main the main uh, category of algorithm that you can have. So model based uh, versus model free, and then the algorithm can be value based, policy based, or actor critic. Then, uh, I said that we can actually close the part of the reinforcement learning and start understanding how we're going to implement our reinforcement learning on, on Azure. So let's start from explaining how the Azure platform works. If you are familiar with it, uh, you know that in the Azure platform there are three different offerings. The first is the AI apps and agent, which are the cognitive services. This is the easiest way you can do an AI on Azure. They are basically um, um, APIs that you can call inside your code or your application or your solution uh, that allow you to uh, actually solve very specific problems, such as understanding what's in a picture, understanding natural language, uh, personalize the content in a web page, this kind of stuff. So the model is already pre-built for you from Microsoft and from years of Microsoft research. You just have to take the API, uh, see if it fits your scenario, and then use it. And this is the easiest way that you can do machine learning. Then we have also a knowledge mining offering. So if you're interested in understanding and get even more information from the data that you have, that can be different kind of data, such as documents, PDF, uh, images, and different kind, uh, so a mixture of, uh, of data that you can have, and you want to create an, in an index on top of it and being able to search inside your uh, solution uh, these information, you can use our uh, Azure Search, Azure Cognitive Search, uh, service, which allowed to, allows you to do all this in a, very, in a very easy way. And last but not least, if you actually need to create your custom ML, um, ML uh, project and model, and uh, you need to be able to um, take advantage of uh, the computation that the cloud offers and uh, the flexibility that the cloud gives you, then you can use our actually Azure machine learning service. Uh, to, to actually get, uh, get the flexibility that you want. The service I'm talking about, it's called Azure Machine Learning Service, and it's a platform that allows you to actually create simplified custom machine learning models and allows you to uh, control the end-to-end the, uh, -end cycle of your machine learning experiment from the data import to the actual deployment of the model. But let's go, let's go step by step. So what do I mean when I say simplify machine learning? It means that you have different ways in which you can actually uh, write your own custom algorithms. So even in this case, uh, we created a platform that actually democratize, democratize AI for you and uh, that allows you to, allows you to, um, to decide if you are uh, totally, if you are in a level in which you're able to write your own algorithm to go to the, the use of the notebook or if you need to actually experiment and try to understand how machine learning works and you need an help and you don't want to write the algorithm by yourself, and then you can take advantage of our visual interfaces. So let's start in order. Um, automated machine learning is actually um, an SDK that, we, um, that is available to you that through the Azure Machine Learning Service you can use through, API, uh, through UI, sorry, but also uh, with the SDK and, and the code and allows you to define a task that can be classification, regression, or, um, or uh, time series analysis, and then uh, import your data. And once you have imported your data, you can actually test the data against a set of algorithms. 
and see how good or bad they perform on your, on your data. And the nice thing is that you can define the metric that you want to evaluate the performance of your algorithm. And the auto ML um, SDK, what it, we will do, it will actually get to you the best model uh, based on the on the on the metric that you defined uh, that perform on your data. So it's very easy to use. It's really literally three clicks. Um, you do that. You import your data. You choose the task that you're gonna do, and then you 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 get back the best algorithm uh, performing on the data that you have. And then you can deploy it. You can you can change some things and uh, uh, get a sense of how easy it is to at least have uh, an initial response on the data that you have. Then we have uh, the visual interface. It is the X uh, machine learning studio, <laughs> if you remember it. It's a drag and drop UI that allows you to actually use some uh, blocks of code already written for you that you just have to connect from the uh, importing of the data to the evaluation of the model and to the deploy that you can just run and uh, very quickly use. And uh, in among these blocks of um, of, uh, of code, you can find also algorithms that you don't have to uh, you don't have to do, to implement, but you just have to understand what they do. So if they are classification or regression or time series. And last but not least, what we're going to see today, uh, our machine learning notebooks. So basically, you can create inside the Azure machine learning service a Jupyter notebook that you can easily run that uh, is going to take advantage of all the end-to-end -end, uh, life cycle that, it, that Azure Machine Learning Service uh, offers to you. And uh, from the notebook, you can actually create and start pipelines. You can uh, develop your own um, machine learning model and then deploy it and control it and test it uh, all from there. So if you're familiar with notebooks and you want a place in which allows you to get to production your, uh, your machine learning uh, algorithms, this is the best place to start. When I talk about end-to-end -end life cycle, what do I mean? Uh, when we talk about developing code, we are talking about DevOps, so code reproducibility, reproducibility, the code testing, and the app development. When we talk about machine learning, we talk about MLOps, so model reproducibility, model validation, model deployment, and model retraining, of course, because it's a different concept of respect to the, the one that we did with the, with the um, software development. So especially, uh, what, I want, what I mean is that you can imagine a data scientist using Azure Machine Learning can use the uh, Azure Machine Learning uh, workspace to actually collaborate with other people to build their uh, model, so to train the model using the computation instances that, that, that Azure Machine Learning uh, offers, validate the model, deploy it, then monitor it, and even set, up, uh, set the flow up for it to train the model. And all this it, uh, can be done using the Azure Machine Learning Service and the Azure DevOps, of course, uh, to, to guarantee collaboration uh, with the app development and um, also to be able to have everything in one place uh, and get control of your machine learning flow. Okay. So as I said at the beginning of this session, though, we would have been uh, able to, by the end of the session, create a reinforcement learning algorithm on Azure, and now we discover where, so we're gonna use the Azure Machine Learning Service uh, that actually help us simulate, uh, uh, train, uh, sorry, uh, an agent, a Minecraft agent to uh, get out of a maze, right? Do you remember this pic that I show you uh, at the beginning of it? So we're gonna get through how to do this. First of all, let's understand a bit uh, what we are going to use behind the scene. So we're going to use the Azure Machine Learning Service that I'm going to show you in a bit. I'm going to switch from the slides to the Azure portal. But what I want to, to, to show you before we get there is uh, what is the computation instance and how the computation is going to uh, work when we are going to uh, run our notebook. So we're going to have a notebook uh, that is going to be that we can imagine as the data scientist submits the experiment. So the experiment is going to have a notebook. Inside the notebook, there are going to be some, uh, uh, some scripts that are going to be uh, executed once we run the notebook. And behind the scene, what we are going to create is uh, Array Cluster. Array Cluster array, uh, is uh, an open source framework uh, developed by Berkeley uh, a few years back. 
and uh, allows you to parallelize and distribute the work uh, in training. And in this case, the architecture that we're going to have is going to be a GPU head node with two worker nodes that are going to take um, a container image of Minecraft uh, uh, Project Malmo envir gym environment that was uh, uh, released a few, few years ago uh, to test, actually, and play with reinforcement learning. Uh, and it's going to be able to uh, take our model, so the model that we are going to train, and uh, simulate uh, the, um, the agent inside uh, the Minecraft uh, maze. And uh, it's going to show us the results in some nice uh, video. So it's going to give us some training results uh, with some video in which we can see the agent actually trying to learn to move inside the environment of Minecraft and try to get uh, high head and uh, do the environment that I showed you before. So I hope it was clear. So we have a head node, we had some worker node, we download an image of a container that contains uh, the environment uh, which allows us to take the model that we are gonna create with our, um, with our machine learning service, open the Minecraft simulation environment simulate the environment and see how the agent performs and that gets some back some results some videos to see how good or bad is our agent performing in, in the environment so let me switch between uh the actual um azure portal okay so let's go and let's deep dive a bit on the Azure Machine Learning Service. So when you create the Azure Machine Learning Service on the portal, it's gonna create for you inside the resource group where you uh, deploy it, uh, different kinds of resources. Uh, especially, it's gonna create for you the Machine Learning Workspace, the Azure Key Vault, uh, an Azure Storage Account, and application inside. And all these, inf these, um, and all these services are gonna be deeply connected with your uh, workspace. So if you click on the workspace, if you click on the workspace, sorry, um, you're gonna see that we have, uh, it's gonna open for you the, open, uh, the overview and you can launch the web portal for the Azure Machine Learning Workspace. Clicking here, launch on Studio or just clicking on the Studio web URL. I already have it here open. So when you open the Azure Machine Learning Studio web portal, what you're gonna see are the three things that I showed you before. So the ways in which you can actually write some machine learning code inside, uh, inside the service, which is using notebooks, using automated ML, or using designer. And the other thing that I want to show you before we get, um, uh, we get to, to looking in what, what is inside the, our uh, notebook is the experiment uh, tab. So here you can see these are notebooks, AutoML and Designer, so the way you can author actually things inside um, Azure ML. And here there are what, are what I would call the components of Azure uh, Machine Learning Service. So the data set, the experiments, the pipelines that you can create, the, the, re the model registered inside the workspace and the endpoints that you want to, that refers to the model that you publish and that you can consume. But let's go to the experiment tab. So as you can see, I have two kinds of experiment. One is called Minecraft Maze. The other one is Minecraft Maze Longer. Let's click on, on one. Inside every experiment, you have to think about the experiment as a, basically a logical container in which you have all the runs related to the model training that you are doing. As you can see, I have one failed and one completed. I can click inside the run and I can get so many information, such as when it was created, such as how much it, uh, it, it took to the, for the run to actually uh, be executed, an ID, uh, which was the script name that uh, actually was, um, th that refers to the duration, so that was um, the starter with this run, and who created this run. If I go to child runs, I can also see that there are some other run uh, related to this that took uh, also 12 minutes and that were compute on a computer target that I defined that was the G my GPU cluster, the one that I showed you before in the, in the slide. And I can see all different kind of information from here. So imagine your experiment is really important because you need to set this variable inside your machine learning experiment so that you actually have the versioning of the, the model training that you're doing so that you can see all the steps that, that you're taking and you can get back if you 
do different training of your model if you get you you can get back to the to the one that actually performed better but let's go to the focus of our uh, of our talk which is our notebook so here I have uh, the notebook that you can actually, I'm gonna leave you the, um, the links and the, uh, all the things that you need to actually try this at home. Uh, and what I want to show you is this notebook is actually really well documented and you can try it, it's actually pretty easy. Remember that before running this notebook, you need to run a setup development environment because the architecture with Ray that I show you needs to be uh, under a virtual VNet. So you need to create the virtual, uh, the virtual uh, network before. I already created that one. If you remember, it was in my, uh, in my uh, resource group. So you can see it here. Uh, this is my VNet. And uh, when I create the resources, I'm going to show you that it's going to put the, the cluster inside the VNet. But Let's go and try to understand what the, the notebook does. So the first thing it does is connect to the workspace. So it gets the workspace name, the workspace location, and the resource group uh, so that it knows where you can create uh, the, the experiment. Here I create my experiment so that I know next time that I'm going to do a run, um, I can have a different experiment or I can always use the same one uh, and get different runs uh, of that setting. So it depends on you how you want to actually uh, actually implement that. Then the next thing that we need is actually to create or attach the compute uh, resources. And uh, as I said to you, for this experiment, we need uh, a Ray head node that we run on a GPU enable mode. The cluster size uh, is going to be one. And then we're going to have some um, uh, some uh, CPU uh, image, uh, CPU cluster that we're gonna create in the next step. So, first thing first, as I said to you, I'm gonna use my VNet here, okay, and uh, I'm creating my cluster using uh, the Azure ML code. It's pretty simple. So I create a compute target. I give it the workspace. I give it the name, and then uh, if it already exists if I found the existing compute target. Otherwise, I can give it uh, the uh, VM size that I want, the maximum and minimum node, uh, the information of the VNet in this case, and then I just click on create, and I just uh, execute the create, and I wait for the cluster uh, completion. So then we create our uh, compute cluster. So I just created two D2 nodes. Uh, that uh, will start, that will allow us to, to actually do the simulation and stuff. And I do the same thing in this case. Uh, I give the cluster a name, I connect it to my workspace, and I check if the cluster already exists. Otherwise, I tell him um, to, to create uh, a D2 standard VMs uh, with a minimum of zero nodes and a maximum of 10. So to actually, um, uh, to actually increment the parallelization of the work. And then there is the most important part, which is the creation of the environment. So I told you that we would have been uh, actually downloaded um, um, a container instance that contains uh, the configuration needed to start the Minecraft uh, gym uh, of Project Malmo that we use to, to train the to train the and simulate uh, our environment and our um, our agent. And I can create this uh, environment variable here that contains all this information. And then finally, this is our training.pi uh, uh, script. And I want to focus you on a few things, especially this uh, tune.run. Uh, Ray init uh, starts the uh, Ray uh, open framework. But the most important thing is this run command here. And what this run command here does is basically your scheduler and or uh, orchestrator for uh, all the parallelized uh, training that you're gonna do. So this command is super important. You give him the model, sorry. You give him <clears throat> the model that you are gonna actually run with the experiment, which is this Impala model. And then you give him all the configuration that he needs to actually work. So 
he knows that he needs to use the environment called Minecraft. Uh, you give him in the Impala, there is also uh, all the, uh, the specification of which are the goals that uh, the agent needs to learn, so all the information on that. Then you give him the number of workers, the number of CPUs, you give all the information he needs to, to know which is the experiment that he has to do. And then when this is executed, it actually um, runs, uh, that starts the training. But how do we start the training in real time? So how do we execute this uh, actual um, Pi script from our uh, notebook? You need to create what is called a reinforcement learning estimator, which is a step that uh, it's going to trigger a pipeline of reinforcement learning. And in fact, you give it the Minecraft train.pis as an entry script. You give it the compute target. You give it the inf environment information that you have stored in your environment variable. And then you give it the maximum duration. For the sake of this demo, it took me five hours to get uh, the result that I'm going to show you in a bit. Uh, of course, the more you train it, the more it learns, and uh, the better it gets your, uh, your agent. Once I'm satisfied, when I, once I filled out all the estimator information that I need to run my reinforcement learning step, I just submit my my estimator step and I wait for completion. Uh, it's gonna print out for you some information, but it's there is an even better way to see how it is going. There is a tensor board that can be displayed uh, via the Azure Machine Learning Service. It gives you uh, an API, this uh, a link that you can actually click. It takes a while, so you need to first start the run here, and once the start uh, the run has started at least for five, 10 minutes, then you can actually uh, execute this step and see, uh, and see the, the dashboard that it creates for you, where you can actually see how good or bad <coughs> is the environment is the agent performing. Once it finished, the nice thing is that I'm not going to go through very into details in, in everything that does, but basically what it does, it simulates uh, some runs. And the stores here in the files, it's, it's going to create for you a folder called training artifacts. And this, inside these training artifacts, you're going to have some, some videos, sorry, here, some videos. And these videos are actually the videos of the agent performing in the, in the maze that you just created. And uh, you can see how good or bad it interacts with the environment. So the other thing that it does, it actually registers the model. So here, it actually stores the model that it just created, uh, giving it an, a model name. And so you then can go to the models tab here and find it there. And I can show you here. So I go to models. And as you can see here, I have my final model Minecraft maze. The nice thing, always because we uh, care about the end-to-end -end, um, control and management of our process, is that it also says stores for you the version. So I, as you remember, I had two different experiments because I did, I, did, uh, I changed some of the environmental variables to check uh, if uh, the training uh, was uh, going better or worse, depending on what, uh, the things that I changed. So I wanted to have two different uh, experiments for me. But actually, the model in the end was always the same. Uh, so I didn't want to change, uh, I didn't want to create another model with a different name. I just wanted uh, a new version of it. And as you can see, I, I left the name the same, but the version is different here. So I can see that there is a version one and a version two. And if I click on it, it also gives me the information, uh, all the information that I need. And it gives you also information on, uh, on the experiment uh, that, you, that you run them into. So you can also know to which experiment or to which run they were actually linked. And then in the end, it creates this rollout uh, PI. Uh, so as I said to you, basically they replay the agent decision in the Malmo environment and uh, it records these, uh, these short videos to show you how good or bad it performs. So let me go back to the presentation. We were here, we were learning about the architecture, but in the end, what actually happened is this. So this is one of the run that was, um, that was actually uh, executed uh, by, uh, by, by my agent. And as you can see, I can, uh, can show you uh, again to you. 
Uh, it's not performing exceptionally well, <laughs> but it took me five hours just to, to get some results. So at least it's moving inside the environment and it's not dying. And I can assure you that there were some few videos in which it goes straight to the lava. So as much as you train it and uh, the more time you, you get the training uh, going, it's going to learn even better how to actually interact in the, in the environment. So it's, it's pretty nice. You can find everything I show you at this link here, the AKMS uh, slash Minecraft RL demo. Um, and you can test it creating your own Azure machine learning service, importing the, importing the, the, the notebook and just run it, uh, creating the resources. And that said, I hope that uh, by the end of this session, you learn a bit more about the reinforcement learning world, that you like the demo and that you're actually going to try it. And I can't wait to see you what you uh, get out, out with. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. But uh, if not, here I can leave you some of my contacts. If you want to contact me, feel free to do it. I want to thank you, Playing Concept, uh, for inviting me here, all the sponsors for supporting uh, the event online, and I hope to see you soon. So stay safe, and thank you, thank you very much. Goodbye.